W News at 11. Right now at 11, an Oregon man has been arrested, accused of participating in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. His arrest adding to the growing list of local people facing legal trouble in the years after the riot. 34-year-old David Medina is the 11th person from our area to face federal charges. Alma McCarty is in the newsroom with those details. Alma? Well, David, China, Medina is from Sherwood and faces a felony charge plus several misdemeanors for allegedly breaching the Capitol building and in his case attempting to break a Speaker of the House sign inside. Court documents reveal a series of screenshots prosecutors say show Medina alongside rioters that day. On January 6, 2021, hundreds of rioters in Washington, D.C. stormed the United States Capitol. In the 37 months since, the FBI says more than 1,300 people have been charged in nearly all 50 states for crimes related to this breach. On Friday, federal agents adding to that list with the arrest of 34-year-old David Medina. A tipster initially pointed out the Sherwood man on video and gave the FBI his Instagram username. From there, agents reviewed and gathered open source material like Twitter posts, compiling the evidence in court papers. The probable cause document includes snapshots of inside the Capitol building, showing Medina attempting to break the sign above Representative Nancy Pelosi's office. Agents also detail how Medina looks directly into the camera, allegedly saying we were normal, good, law-abiding citizens and you guys did this to us. We want our country back. Additional evidence, like the screenshot of this surveillance, shows Medina waving an ornate American flag. There's also seven pages of text messages from an FBI-executed search warrant on Medina's phone. In them, he discusses plans to head from Oregon to D.C., and he tells a friend they should be storming the Capitol building and governor's houses armed and ready to take over. The probable cause document also highlighting that Medina appears to make light of his participation in the riot on social media using the hashtag FBI's favorite citizen. Court documents also allege Medina was involved in the intrusion at the Oregon State Capitol in December 2020. Medina made his initial court appearance in U.S. District Court on Friday. We've reached out to his lawyer but haven't heard back yet. His next appearance will be in two weeks. David, China. Thank you, Alma. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, Beaverton-based Nike has started cutting down its workforce. That's after it announced it's laying off 2% of its employees worldwide, about 1,600 jobs. Nike says it's because of slowing sales and decreasing consumer spending. Another round of layoffs is planned for the end of May. Oregon State Police are continuing to ask for help to find a missing person. 48-year-old Gurjinder Singh Graywall, who we're told goes by Gary, was last seen near the St. Paul Bridge on Highway 2. 219 in Marion County. This was late in the morning on Thursday, February 8th. Authorities found his car just south of the bridge, and police are asking anyone who may have dash cam footage or saw him in that area that morning to contact them. His family provided these photos of him. And Amtrak has once again suspended rail service between Seattle and Portland. It's all because of a landslide on the tracks related to previous weather events. Amtrak says Cascades and Coast Starlight trains are impacted through tomorrow, and it's providing alternative transportation. All lines are expected to be back in service on Sunday morning. Months after teachers in Oregon's biggest school district went on strike, teachers at Salem-Kaiser may do the same. So after the union declared an impasse on Thursday, our Thomas Schultz took a look at the issues that could lead to a work walkout. Oh, it's 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 concerning for sure. Because Families are paying close attention to bargaining between administrators and teachers in Oregon's second largest district. And this week, bad news when negotiators hit a wall. From the moment of impasse forward, the tone and the stakes change dramatically. A Thursday night impasse temporarily pauses bargaining and escalates tensions. If we don't make some changes, uh, we might as well just go home <laughs> because it's not working as it is. This Tyler Skello Lakeberg, the president of the teachers union, says for months teachers have asked for smaller class sizes and parents agree it's an issue. My daughter here at Wright is 
um, in a kindergarten and she has an absolutely amazing teacher. Um, she uh, is unfortunately given a class of 28 kids. In great economic times and in poor economic, economic times, class size is increased. It has never been a priority for this district. Superintendent Andrea Castaneda says the district would love to see smaller class sizes, though right now they're facing a large budget deficit. What's hard right now is that we have negative $32 million. And in the face of having to cut over $30 million from our budget, we cannot possibly add $10 million in staffing. The other big concern, teacher hours. Educators want eight-hour work days versus the 40-hour work week they currently have. It doesn't seem like a change, though teachers say currently scheduled shifts can switch suddenly. Someone should know their work shift for that week, for that month, uh, and not have it changed in an unpredictable manner. Though Castaneda says they can't agree to the change because parent-teacher conferences in open houses require a scheduling shift. The one issue that isn't a big problem, teacher salaries. Salem Kaiser offered a 9.5% bump over two years, and educators say they're close to an agreement. Still, they say overall, the $37 million district offer isn't good enough. And while Castaneda says it's all they can afford, teachers disagree. Our district has been spinning out of control for years. They have been hiring more people at the district level. Though this year, Castaneda cut her own salary by 30000 and froze those of dozens of administrators. We're going to have to be a little creative on both sides, and there will have to be concessions on both sides. And now she's joining leaders from Portland Public, who weathered a near-month-long teacher strike in calling on the state for more funding. First, the formula is unfair and inequitable. And as the two sides bargain and call for funding, a strike looms over families. I wish they could just come to an agreement. Thomas Schultz reporting there straight ahead on this Friday night.